With the popularity of connecting controllers and field devices to AWS, um, the question comes up a lot about what if I lose my internet connection or what if I don't want my devices connected to the internet at all. Uh, for that reason, AWS created a service called Greengrass. Uh, Greengrass essentially allows a piece of hardware to act as that IoT endpoint. Um, and essentially that endpoint funnels data up to the cloud um, and uh, acts as an MQTT broker for local devices as well. Um, it's very helpful in uh, deployed systems where you want a single point of contact for the internet. Um, and also, uh, it acts as a bit of a uh, reliability tool so that when you do lose your internet connection, it can pool data and then ship that data up to the cloud when, when it gets reconnected. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, creating a uh, Greengrass Core, really the, the hardware device that acts as that endpoint, and then connecting Wago controllers to that Greengrass Core um, using Wago's cloud connectivity suite. So uh, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi as my core. I have two PFC 100s that will connect as GGADs or Greengrass aware devices. So I've got my hardware set up. Let's, uh, let's get programming. So not too different from the AWS service. The Greengrass core sits in between the IoT things and the AWS cloud service. It acts as a broker and also can host Lambda functions. So looking at the IoT things service, uh, the Greengrass core will sit just below that on the hardware level locally. And below that will be the GGADs or Greengrass aware devices. The core will make contact directly with the cloud where the Greengrass aware devices will only do this on first connection. Then they will broker themselves through the Greengrass core to make contact with the cloud and can also uh, broker from one to another. They can re-establish their connection if they need to re-credential themselves. So first we're going to go into the Raspberry Pi um, and we're going to just do some housekeeping to get it ready for the Greengrass core software. So first we're going to add a user called ggc underscore user and we're going to add a group called ggc underscore group. Then we're going to issue a sudo uh, raspi update uh, apt-get install rpi update command and then we're going to control the kernel by doing sudo rpi update with a checksum listed here. This is completed, we're going to reboot the pi. Okay, so our pi is rebooted. Now we're going to navigate to the cd etc syscontrol.d directory and we're going to modify the 98-rpi.conf file. We're going to make sure that these lines are at the end, uh, which you'll have to add. Control x to get out of that and we're going to navigate then uh, actually, we'll issue this command to make sure that it took. Then we're going to navigate to the boot directory. And now we're going to uh, issue cgroup underscore memory equals one command. And we're going to reboot again. Now that our Pi is ready, we're going to go to the AWS Management Console. We're going to go to the IoT Core. And we're going to click Green Grass and Groups. We're going to add a group to this, and we're going to use Easy Creation. We're just going to call this CS underscore gg underscore group, and we'll click next. Then it's going to ask us to add a core. We'll just use the default name here. Click next. And there's some automation scripts that will run. Um, we'll click create group and core, and it's going to run through these scripts. It's going to create now our certification file and a software package to download. So it takes us to this page where we can click to download the, uh, the certifications and the config file. And then if we scroll down, we're also going to download the the software package for Raspi and Jesse. We're now going to secure copy this from uh, our local machine to the Raspberry Pi. So um, I'm going to do this by uh, going to my terminal uh, on my Mac and I'm just going to issue a secure copy command for everything in my downloads folder to my Pi. So you could also use FTP to do this as well or any other file transfer. Um, yeah, any file transfer method. So that's done. Now we go to the Pi, and if we uh, list the contents of our home Pi directory, we can see our cert file and our Greengrass file. So now we're going to issue a sudo tar xevf Greengrass Linux, and we're going to dump this into the uh, root directory. That's installed now. We'll get the list again, and we're going to add the certs. So we're going to do sudo tar xevf c 
uh, into our um, Greengrass directory, which will create the certs directory and also dump the config file in there. We can navigate to the certs directory in Greengrass and see the certs there and issue the command now to get the root ca.pem. Okay, now our system's ready to run. We're going to go now to the Greengrass uh, directory in, in the root and uh, we're going to issue a run command by uh, issuing sudo greengrass sd start and we can see it's running successfully by ps-a. Okay, now we can finish this in AWS and um, now we're going to go to the uh, uh, group and we're going to deploy this. I'm going to select automatic detection and uh, we'll make sure that we have only one endpoint that we're going to um, connect to. So we can do this by uh, going to settings, going down to the cloud connectivity information, and under connectivity we want to make sure we have only one in here. So we're going to go and uh, delete everything else so that it looks uh, just like this where we've got our single core IP and our port. After I've changed that connection info, I'm going to go back to my Greengrass group and I'm going to redeploy this one more time. I can check this now by going to my uh, group and connection info and verifying this. So next I'm going to go to Greengrass and I'm going to go to the groups and I'm going to add uh, my devices. So I'm going to click devices, I'm going to do create new device, I'm going to give this device a a name, an arbitrary name, CS underscore PFC 100 underscore 1. Click Next, and then I'm going to create the certificates with one click. And I'll download those just like I did in my Greengrass core. And we'll do our second device. We're going to call, uh, we're going to call this CS underscore PFC 100 underscore 1. And follow the same method. We're going to click uh, Next. We're going to download these uh, certs as well with one click. And I'll download these certs as well into my downloads folder. Next I'll click finish. And then we are uh, going to go back and uh, go to software under the IoT service and scroll down and find the SDKs. We're going to uh, download the Python SDK specifically. So we'll just go to the GitHub account, download the zip. This will be in our downloads folder as well. Now we need to copy all these files over to our PFCs. So first we're going to do a secure copy of the uh, SDK into the, the first PFC 100 root and we're also going to copy over the, um, the certificates. We're going to do the same thing with the second. And so now in each PFC we've got a uh, SDK as well as a certificate uh, tarballed file. I'll SSH into my PFC and uh, first I'm going to extract the uh, certs into the uh, into the etc ssl certs file. After that's completed I'm going to remove that file and I'm going to navigate to etc ssl certs. I'm going to download my root ca using the same script I did in my core. Now I'm going to go to my home directory and unzip the aws sdk. I'm going to remove the zip file and now I'll navigate into my aws sdk. Now this assumes you have python installed. Uh, per my previous video you can see how to do that. We're going to issue a sudo python uh, setup.py install uh, command, which will install the SDK, and now we can go to the samples and look at the basic discovery. I'm going to copy this basic discovery script to my uh, etc SSL certs file and um, hold on to that for now. Now we're going to do the exact same thing in the uh, second PFC. We're going to unzip the certs file into the etc SSL certs directory. We're going to grab the root CA. We're going to install the uh, AWS SDK by un unzipping it first and then issuing the setup.py install command. And we're also going to copy this um, basic discovery into our SSL certs file folder. Now we're going to go to the group and in the group we are going to um, go to subscriptions and we're going to just add an easy subscription so that we can run the basic discovery.py um, script. We're going to Source this from CS underscore PFC 100 uh, underscore 2. We're going to target is going to be underscore 1, and we're going to just filter it by the Hello World Pub Sub topic. Now that that's done, uh, we're going to go into settings. I'm going to adjust, uh, I'm going to add this role 
uh, the green grass service rule, which doesn't automatically add. And then I'm also going to adjust my root CA time frame. I'm just going to set this at 30 days so that I could run this for 30 days without having to re, um, re, uh, reacquire my certifications. Set that at 30 days. It'll automatically save. And then I'm going to go to deployments and I'm going to uh, deploy this again. Once this is deployed, uh, everything's now ready to use. Um, I'll put the scripts that I'll, or the calls in the um, in the GitHub file. But I'm now going to go to my um, basic discovery.py, uh, which I've copied over to my EGCSSL certs uh, directory, and I'm going to run this using my certifications that I have and um, point it at my AWS endpoint. I'm going to do the same thing in both PFCs. Um, PFC1 will be the subscriber, PFC2 will be the uh, publisher, and I don't really care about the data. All I'm trying to do is verify that I have connection here. And um, there's an important step that's going on here as well, which is um, AWS essentially is handing back this group CA certificate which I'll then need to copy into my ETC SSL certs directory as my root.ca.pem. And I'm going to do this in both PFCs because uh, this is the uh, root CA that I'll need to connect to my green grass core. So once this is done, um, now my devices can make connections. So if I go now to web-based management, uh, I'm going to go into PFC 100 underscore 1 first. And uh, we're going to go to the cloud connectivity um, menu option. Login as admin, and now we're going to add this service. So we're going to enable the cloud service. We're going to select AWS. We're going to use the host name. This is our core, uh, our Greengrass core IP address, and we're going to name this CS underscore PFC 100 underscore 1. We're going to change the root CA to uh, root.ca.pem in the etc SSL certs directory. And we're going to add the certificates that we downloaded uh, from our uh, green grass device. So we can refresh those by going to ETC SSL certs, getting a list, and we'll just copy and paste this out of here into the web-based management. Copy this, put this also in the key file, and we just need to change this to .private.key instead of .cert.pem. Uh, I'm also going to change the data protocol to uh, native MQTT, and we'll submit and reboot. Now I need to do the, uh, the same thing in the second PFC. And uh, I'm going to speed this up so that um, it doesn't take too much time. Again, we're going to change the name, we're going to change the certificate the root CA, we're going to change this uh, certification file, we're going to change the key, we're going to reboot that as well. So then we go back to PFC1, you see that now it's running and it's connected, so we verified connection with the green grass uh, core, and uh, same story in PFC2, uh, we're also connected. So next we're going to go and just create a really simple e-cockpit project. Um, for this though, I want not only to trade data between them, but I also want to trade data um, I want to update the IoT Things shadow, so um, I'll attach this project to my GitHub account. Um, but uh, essentially, all we're going to do is update a single value, and we're going to use an analog input to do that. So we'll name the analog inputs. I'm going to go now add the library, the cloud, Wago App Cloud library. I want to make sure that I'm using the right version, which is going to be, at this point, um, 1.2.4.13. I'm going to add the function block um, for native MQTT pub and add that to my code. So the topic is going to be my um, AWS IoT Things shadow. This is going to be AWS uh, slash things slash CS underscore PFC 100 underscore one slash shadow uh, slash update. Uh, my quality of service is zero. I don't need to retain this. Um, my size is going to be varying. Um, so I'm going to create a double word value for this. Um, my A data, this is going to be my array, my byte array of data that I'm sending. We're just going to create an array of 1,000 bytes. 
Next to my trigger is just a Boolean. Uh, and then I've got some feedback, uh, a busy output, an error output, and then a function block status object. So once I've created these, uh, now I just need to set some data in here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a library uh, to concat concatenate some data, and then I also um, I'll need also a memory copy library as well. But for now, we're going to create a send string, and this is going to be a standard AWS IoT thing shadow object. Um, so this is going to be state desired, and we're just going to call this uh, value. And then we'll add our data behind this, which will be our analog input value. Convert that to a string. And then we need to um, finish this with three curly braces, and we're done. So next we need to uh, issue a memory copy. Um, we're going to copy this from the string into the array of bytes uh, and uh, get the length as well. So we're going to um, add the wago sysplainmem library and use the memory copy method. And our uh, destination is going to be our MQTT pub array. Our source is going to be our send string, and our length is going to be our MQTT pub size. And now uh, I'm just going to do an argument. Um, if the data is equal to the old data, then we won't do anything. But when the value has changed, I want to publish. So I want to keep a streaming uh, data going into my cloud. Um, so I'm just going to um, yeah, analyze this against an old value. And when it's changed, it's going to publish and write the data into the old value. So very simple logic. And now I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to uh, download this to both my controllers. I'll copy this over to my second controller, uh, including the library manager. And I just need to change the topic since we're doing PFC 100 uh, underscore 2. And I'll do a uh, multiple download with this. And multiple downloads is pretty nice because it'll download to both controllers simultaneously and uh, it will also run them. So I'm going to issue that. Then I'm going to connect to both. And flip the switch to run. And so both of these are running. We can verify by moving the uh, analog pot. So lastly, we're going to go back to the uh, AWS. We're going to go to Greengrass again and we're going to go to subscriptions. We're going to add a subscription for um, CS underscore PFC 101 as a source. The um, target will be the IoT cloud and we're going to add the um, the shadow topic. So it's AWS things CS underscore PFC 100-1 and we're just going to use a wildcard there. We're going to add the subscription. We're going to do the same for PFC 100 underscore 2. So the AWS things CS underscore PFC 100 underscore 2 uh, slash hash and we're going to deploy this. Now both of the AWS um, shadow update messages will go straight to the cloud. So we're going to deploy both of those and we'll be able to go now to the shadows uh, of both devices in the IoT things and we can monitor them. So even though they're going through the AWS core uh, the Greengrass core, you can see that the data is being published now to the cloud. So you can see without a lot of effort, um, we can get these controllers to uh, to sit in this Greengrass network and talk to this Greengrass endpoint. So I think this can be extremely uh, useful for reliability issues, security issues, etc. Um, and allows uh, devices to share data locally in their network. So um, please subscribe to the channel, uh, leave any questions or application ideas in the comments section below, and I'll look forward to seeing you again.